was driving yeah. the, the description. Of and this actually, you know, when ringtones went from the bleepy polyphonic ringtones to actual true tones, you know, samples, that was actually our file format, rich music format, which was adopted by the industry as the standard. So you should clearly remember mod files, which were, you know, yeah. another way of, of doing that. Yeah, well, that was a sort of inferior way to do what Phoenix sure. did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm just kind of fond of it because I remember all these mods sent for various platforms I used back in the 90s. So where do you think things are going to go moving forward when, when it comes to broader and, gen, and more in general things like music distribution, uh, music composition, things like interactive music. You've always been really big on interactive music. Mm. Beatnik kind of allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of games that you know, tried to do that and some have succeeded somewhat. I know that I worked on an on a, uh, interactive music synth for a, a video game company called Escape Factory, which mm -hmm. eventually was bought by PopCap Games. And you know, it was so challenging. I remember mm -hmm. you know, trying to get it right. So do you think that's still a thing? Do you think that people are still trying that holy grail of changing the music dynamically based on what's happening in the game? I think people are still trying. All this stuff is getting much easier you know, as time goes on. From year to year, it gets so much easier to do stuff. There's so much more available technology. And audiences are getting hipper to, to, you know, to, to that, that use of music. So yeah, I think it's, it's definitely still evolving. Uh, what has yet to evolve fully is the understanding within the industry of the importance of sound. That, in fact, users' perception of what they're seeing and what they're experiencing is very, very heavily influenced by the quality of the sound that they're hearing. And when I first went to Silicon Valley in 1990, 91, it was impossible to get this message across to tech companies, you know. They would say, we don't even have speakers in our, in our <laughs> device. You know, it's like, you have speakers, you annoy the guy in the next cubicle when he's trying to do his spreadsheets. You know, we don't want music. And, and then plus, music on computers will never sell. You know? Right. This is companies like Intel and HP and Microsoft, you know, were telling me this. And look at them the Beginning now. of the 90s. Well, the only people that were doing music on computers was those dreamers over at Apple, you know. Look at them now. Look at them now. When I started my company, the venture capitalists would come in, and one of them took me aside and said, Thomas, you better get those Macs off your desktop, because it really makes you look like a bunch of hippies. <laughs>